You are connected. Finally. Yay. So see, I want you to know, and I want everybody to know that this is Pam Bussy, and I have my good friend, buddy artist, who I'm going to be having a conversation with, Libby Smith. And is Zach there in the background being quiet as a church mouse? Yeah, he is. Well, uh, Zach, thank you, because it's always an adventure when I try to do a remote podcast. So I know you've been there trying to help Libby, and I appreciate you, and I know that she does. So thank you. He put his thumb up. <laughs> <laughs> Nonverbal communication on an auditory podcast sound way to go. It's all good, okay? <laughs> so to everyone who is listening, today is December 1st, 2020. And I am speaking with Libby Smith. Libby is an artist. And we're going to talk in a few moments. Um, She's going to tell us a little bit about herself. But um, for those of you who have listened to my podcast in the past, you know that everybody I talk to that I have a personal connection to. So I'm going to share with you how I know Libby. So I believe it was in 2018 that you had an exhibit called Magical Beans at City Arts Factory. Yes, I did. And that's where I met you. And it was awesome. (laughs) It was. And what I remember when I first met you and I was looking at your art, and we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to tell people where hopefully they can actually get some visuals of what you have done is we were talking, and I don't even remember what we were talking about, but you made the comment and it struck me. You said you had never seen a black fairy, I think is what you said. Yeah. And And then art or anywhere, my daughter actually kind of said, why are your fairies white? And it struck me like lightning bolt. I'd never seen a black fairy and that had to change. And you in fact changed it. And so I'm going to share with people, hopefully towards the the middle or the end where they might be able to find actual photos of some of the work that you've done. And of course, I know that you have a website and you're going to share that information as well. Whenever you want to shout it out now, later in the middle, it's all good. So, Uh, That's how I met you at your exhibit, Magical Beans. And what was special, not just that, yes, I saw for the first time Black (laughs) Fairies that you had indeed painted, number one. (laughs) But if you remember, you actually dressed up like a fairy too, did you not? I did. I dressed up like a fairy one of the nights and uh, for the actual um opening I think opening it was, the reception. I did. Yeah. And for the second night I did not. Right. Because I remember I met your niece and she was so angelic and beautiful. She was dressed up. I met your daughter and I think I think your mom was there. My too. mother and my sister who've both passed. I know. And, and I'm so sorry for your loss. And um my brother was there. Okay, so you had your whole family. Hello. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) I'm okay with that. So for people who are not familiar, City Arts um, is a venue where um, in Orlando, where artists have been able to exhibit their works. um, And whenever there was a show there, I would try and go and support because so many of my friends are artists. But let's talk about the exhibit Magical Beings. How did that come to pass um it came to pass because one day I woke up and I couldn't see anything at all my vision was totally gone and I knew it's been coming for since I was a child um they told me it could go anytime and they know nothing about the disease that's in there um it's extremely rare there was seven diagnosed cases in the world when I was diagnosed um and 
one day I woke up and there was nothing. And I'm like, it's okay. It's happened before. Five minutes, you know, minute to five minutes. It'll be back. And 16 hours later, I was frantic and scared and thought about what did I last paint? Oh, my God. What was the last thing I painted? And I had so many regrets. And I decided that I didn't want You know, as it came back, it came back about 16 hours later, it started coming, some of it coming back, not all of it came back. And um, I'm like, with what time I have left, I need to paint as much as I can and paint something I want to, I want to say and what I want. So I had painted um, a fairy, one fairy right beforehand, and I thought about it, and when my daughter said something about a black fairy, well, she said, why are my fairies white? I thought about it, and I was like, you know what? I have something to say. I have something to say that's really important, and that is I need people to look beyond the skin color. I need you to look at – because people come up to my, my fairies and go, oh, my God, they're so beautiful. And they and, are. I and can they attest are, to that. They are everyday gorgeous. people. They are people I see in the grocery store, the people I see in the doctor's office. You know, wherever I go, I see a face and I'm, I'm like, may I please paint your face? <laughs> and I've been putting um, these people on fairies because I need people to get past just the skin color and go to. This is a beautiful being. It is more than just a skin color. I agree. So I'm going to back up just a minute because I know that you are a magnificent spirit. Anyone that meets you will know that as well. But for people who do not know you, I'm going to back up a little bit and just ask you to share a little bit about who you are, how long have you been painting? And I know you referenced the loss of your vision, but people, unless you share with them, they will not truly appreciate how magnificent you are and what you do do given the limitation with which you are working. So either we can start and you can just tell us a little bit about who Libby Smith is and then we can kind of go from there if you don't mind. Of course. God, I love you, Pam. Um, <laughs> I I have been in drawing since I was, I can't even remember, like, really uh, beyond what I can remember in childhood. And I know in, in kindergarten, I had a perforated ulcer after, and I had a stomachache after every art class because I just couldn't get the finger <laughs> The way I wanted it. To oh go. my goodness! So you're a type A ended, personality, a perfectionist. Yep, and I ended up with a perforated ulcer. Oh my gosh! <laughs> at at five years old. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and um, so I've always been drawing. And my grandfather, one day, he's a preacher, and he was a um, he wrote lots and lots of books. So when I visit him, he let me write books, and he says all books have to have a cover, and I would draw and um the covers and he was amazed he would say why do your trees look like trees and your roads look like roads (laughs) my roads look like trees and my trees look like roads (laughs) and it always stuck with me and um i i used um pen and ink as a coping mechanism um with things going on in my in my growing up and then decided this is all I've ever wanted to be and draw do so this is what I'm gonna be and do and I have and everybody was like no you're going blind you can't do this and um, I have a very rare eye disease and now I have like so many things wrong with my eyes that it's we're we're at any time now I'm gonna lose my vision any time now um when I paint and draw I can not see the brush tip anymore or the pen tip and I still paint and draw 
And um, you do. And for people, I, I kid you not, Libby is going to share with you her website. And I'm just going to interject in here for a hot moment. Um, she was featured. You've been featured in several publications. I'm just going to name one or two. So people can Google your name in these publications and they can actually see the beauty of your work. So there was on September 21st, 2018, the interview that Trevor Frazier did for you um, in the Orlando Sentinel. So for the listeners, if you want to Google Libby Smith and then Orlando Sentinel, then hopefully what will pull up would be the Orlando Sentinel article, which was written by Trevor Frazier. And, and that was right a few days before the exhibit yes. at City Arts Magical Beings um, it, debuted. It was the day before we loaded everything up to go to to go hang that show. And he was just a treasure. He was so kind and so considerate, wrote an absolutely beautiful article. And it was put, gorgeous, yes. And he put me on the front page and I, I know. you're the one who told me. I know. <laughs> and I literally <laughs> cried, just sat there and cried because they did not tell me that's what they were going to do. And I could not believe it. And Well, I mean, your story, your story, Libby, and you, you are such an inspiration. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you. I mean, and for people who are listening, I mean, the whole premise behind me starting the, the podcast was, number one, how fortunate I am that I know so many magnificent, wonderful, marvelous people um, and just having conversations with them, have you tell your story. And in your story, you are reaching an audience and people are learning and, and there you're an inspiration. Hopefully people can be inspired because I mean, how many times do people hone in on all that they can't do and, and yada, 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 whatever. And I was, and I just like to say, whoa, you know, don't tell me what you can't do because I know so many incredible people who are doing things and 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 you have all your faculties yada yada so I want to thank you for agreeing to have this conversation with me and so I also wanted to mention you were also interviewed by Channel 6 which is our local uh, TV station I was again you, I I've had I the people who have interviewed me have all been wonderful and so sweet that was a that was a really fun interview with them and I believe for those that are listening, you can find that interview on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and you search for the name Libby Smith and put in Channel 6, hopefully they'll be able to find that interview. And so you also, um, I believe someone is doing a short film about you and your life, somebody named John. John in Strong. Yes, John Strong. He was a filmmaker here in town who's won tons of awards. He's amazing. He's a friend. And I'm just in awe of his films. He's won so many awards and I never miss his films. And he recently moved to LA, but right before he left, he says, I really want to do this movie about you. We've been putting it off and we need to do this. So he's got all the film footage now and he came back a few times to to make sure he got everything. And so he's still settling in LA, but he said that as soon as he's, he can, um, he's going to be putting that together. He's thinking maybe January, February, that's a tentative. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's going on in his life? <laughs> the, look, we are all busy, but you yeah. know, in these times where most of us have been um, hunkered down in our homes, um, for some people, you know, they're, they're now stir crazy. For other people, I mean, I always have something to do in my home or outside my home. And I'm grateful I have a home that, you know, I can do stuff inside, outside. Um, but again, you know, people, I think listening to podcasts also is one way for people to, to deal with perhaps the isolation that so many people are feeling and I know people are depressed because they can't be as social 
So there's a lot going on. There really I is a lot going podcasts. on. Podcast. I listen to them every day, pretty much the whole time I'm working. I leave a podcast on most of the time. Wow! And because yeah. it's that human interaction, even though I'm not interacting technically with them, it feels like I am. You know, it feels and indeed like- you are because I mean, hopefully the podcast you're listening to, you're learning something you didn't know, right? Which so, is the whole point of you and just I fun. having this. That too. So the last thing I wanted to share with people is that um, in Orlando, we have the Orlando Museum of Art and Mm -hmm. we've not done it lately again because of, you know, the circumstances we find ourselves in. But once a month, there would be first Thursday. And so I don't know the year that you won Best of Show. It was was the first Thursday. I think it was last year. The, no, the power no. of she was the name of the exhibit. Power of she, I think it was 2019. I don't okay. think it was because I don't think I did anything during 2020. I had to take care of my mom and my sister. Exactly, um, exactly. So I think 2020 pretty much was a wash for me. <laughs> but that's <laughs> a good segue <laughs> into not really so much because part of why we're having this discussion is because in Orlando. For those in the audience who are in the Orlando area, we have FAVO, which is yes, Faith Arts Village of Orlando. Yes, and FAVO, they are so good to the artists in town, the local artists. They they really are an incredible, you know, it's an incredible you know, thing that they're doing for the local artists in town, where they open up a, they have a hotel that, or a motel that they've, um, transformed to a bunch of galleries that they offer for um, rent for the local artists. Exactly. And, and that's a perfect segue into sure. when Incredible. on Friday, what's going to be happening there on Friday for you, Miss Livy? I am crawling out of my hole. <laughs> <laughs> I am a high risk. I, I, I'm, I have COPD and a couple of other things. Um, so I am high risk. So I have been locked down hardcore. Like I haven't left the house, but maybe three times since March. Wow. Um, so I'm literally crawling out of my hole here and I'm going to be showing um, some of my stuff at uh, my, my stuff from before at Favo for Christmas um, on December 4th. And I'm hoping that um. I can essentially make enough that we, I can start 3d this month. Wow. Um, because I really 2d has just gotten to be impossible. Okay. So now explain to us what is the difference between 2d and 3d and are you talking drawing 2d 3d? Um, yes and no. <laughs> I'm, I'm painting, I paint very, real. Um, I think it's impressionistic, but if you, everybody tells me it looks realistic, um, because I see it only one inch and now at one inch, it's very blurry and I see two of everything. So it's to me, when I look at my paintings, I see about a four inch square that is at a time so I can't see my paintings once I back up to see a whole painting it's gone it's just a blur so my little four inch square when you're like one inch away is very blurry like I mean it's now it is but before it was just like this masses of brush strokes that I thought were just uncontrolled they look horrible and everybody tells me that no no you look so realistic why are you doing this and I'm like oh it looks horrible no (laughs) your art is indeed very very realistic and I've seen your recent pen drawings because you do self portraits or you do portraits and they are absolutely incredible yeah that one was hard um that was that was a hard one to to finish I uh, didn't know actually I could have closed my eyes and still done just this about the same 
um, I had to change the way I drew to be able to finish that portrait because about halfway, I pretty much called him and said, I don't know. I don't think I can finish this. I can't see it. I can't see my pen. Wow. So I don't know what I'm laying down anymore. I can't see the ink anymore. So um, I did a panda recently just because I, I wanted to draw. Gorgeous. Yeah, I just wanted to draw something. So I realized I couldn't see the pen ink. So what I did is I swashed some green in where I want plants. And I swashed some black in about the right areas. And then I started inking. Wow. <laughs> so everything was done very backwards of how I usually work. And it's just a matter of adjusting. You adjust to what you got. And that's what I try to tell people when they're like, oh, you're so inspirational. I'm like, uh, no, I'm doing what everybody should do. It's just whatever you got, adjust and deal and with see, it. There, there <laughs> just, is wisdom in exactly what you say. And, and that's why, you know, in having this conversation, hearing you say that, and hopefully when people see your work, they'll be like, oh my God, how, how is it even possible that you did what you did? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And now I'm not, I don't want to blow smoke up anybody's butt either. I, I, I do, I have cried quite a bit in the last, I don't know, few months now. Um, there's a whole lot of crying and self-pity going on well, over here. Well, you know what, Libby? So, everybody, so don't think that I ain't having it too. Everybody, <laughs> everybody experiences low moments, okay? That's human but nature. That's human mean? nature. But then when you get through, you know, with the pity party, then you're like, okay, let me figure out how I can do what I love. How do how I move can on? make it happen? Yep. How it can work for you? And that's what makes your work magical cd i mean truly so yeah, i just keep feeling like somebody keeps throwing me down on the ground and i just have to find another way to stand back up and try again and i get thrown back on the ground and really what you're speaking of for those of us who have experienced life in just that way you know when you get knocked to the ground you got a choice you can yeah. lay you can lay low in which case if you stay on the ground, yeah, you'll never get kicked again because you're on the ground, although you can get kicked on the ground. You can get stepped yeah. on. <laughs> but if you're like, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to let this defeat me, you get up to fight another day. And in the process, yep. you grow and you learn something about yourself, which is like, wow, I can actually do this. I might have to do it differently than how I did it before. But this is teaching me something about me, my strength of character, fortitude, you know, a blessing. I think you get a lot stronger every time you pick yourself up. You get a lot exactly. stronger. Exactly. Um, so you're ready for that next time you get smacked back down. So, and it's been happening a lot. I mean, I'm losing a lot of vision quickly. So every time I realize I like my daughter just moved to San Francisco wow. on Thanksgiving Day. And I thought about it. And when the dawned on me that I will maybe never see her face in person again, that threw me in another tailspin and I was back down on the ground again. <laughs> well, but what I know so, about you is that you were always stretching the boundaries of what you can do. So I know one of the things that you're going to start doing that I've done in the past that I had fun with is working with clay. Yep. That is 3d. 2d just means a one dimensional flat okay. surface. 3d means more than just flat. It's more tactile it can be working with like, clay is very tactile. Exactly. It's all about touch. Exactly. So I have like three different directions I'm actually going in at once. And I figure hopefully I'll find one that I'm good at and, and in that direction. And what's happened in the past is I ended up being pretty good at all of them. So I end up doing all of them at once. <laughs> so that may happen You're, you're kind of like me in that regard, because, you know, I am a jack of and, all trades. And trade. I say that about myself. I mean, years ago, with Shalini Tandon, who's a friend of mine. Um, she teaches batik at Beardall um, Senior Center. I started doing batik and I love doing batik, okay? 
And so yours are beautiful. I've seen them. And so then another friend of mine, Lauren um, Austin, who's an artist, she does magnificent quilts. So then like pre COVID, I was quilting with a bunch of women at Hannibal Cultural Center. Okay. Oh, that's yeah, so, cool. so I, I will I will I will have to figure out how you'll get a chance to to see or feel some of the quilts that I've done. So I went from doing, I'm looking at it, a little a wall hanging <laughs> to deciding, mm-hmm. okay, so now I think I'm ready to create a king size quilt. Okay. Right. That's exactly what I did. I haven't done a quilt. I've done almost everything else as far as you know, embroidery and and got a cruel and and crochet and knitting and um, beading and you name it. I've done it. A quilt was the one thing I haven't tried yet. Well, Lauren, what she does is she creates art quilts. So each. Which is what I would Ex- do if I ever Right, tried. which essentially, you know, she incorporates photographs, you know, that are printed onto fabric. Into, oh, I, it cool. really is into her quilts as well. She is so um, talented that, you know, she will create um, designs in her quilts. And, and like, um, I want to say... It, they're not like sculptures, but I can't describe them. You'd have to, it just blows my mind when I think about all the women that I know and men, not a sexist, who are creative <laughs> and, and what they do. And I mean, and even Zach, he's a musician. I mean, that's creativity. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we all, I believe, have talents. I think sometimes people have never taken the time to be still enough and say, hmm, is there something I really would like to try to do that I could maybe once a week or once a month, you know, take the time. Although in this COVID environment, I mean, people have had plenty of time, but you know, again, it's what you choose to do with your time. You can be like the woe is me, Mm -hmm. or you can be like, okay, what can Mm -hmm. I teach myself? Because there are so many things online. YouTube is like my best friend when I'm trying to do something for the first time or learn something for the first time. Definitely. But I just want to share for those that are local that may not know where Fabo is, it's kind of tricky because the address is. says 221 East Colonial Drive, which the first time I went, I was like, you can't find it. I was like, okay, I, this is Colonial Drive. I don't see 221 East, but it's it's affiliated with Park Lake Presbyterian Church. And that's actually, I think, on Highland. So if you turn on Highland, right. it will get you to like the, the parking lot. To the parking right. lot. And exactly. Yeah. So for people who may not know that, that won't drive around aimlessly like I did the first time I went probably for a good 15 20 minutes to try to figure that out you know what I mean we do too. <laughs> so that's just a little hint for everybody that that hopefully will be coming in just so you know Highland and Colonial and it's like a block up or half a block up but like half a block up is the parking lot on the right yes yes and side. like you said it Left-hand used to side. be a motel, which is absolutely incredible to me, that right, they have turned yeah. into artists. You see all the lighting, everybody has lights everywhere. It's very, you can see it from the parking lot very right. easily. And they usually have food trucks, so it's like a whole vibe. So for you, of course, you yeah. know, everyone has, you have to wear a mask, and we're going to limit wear a mask. how many people can be. Wash your right. hands. We're going we'll to have hand sanitizer. We're going to limit how many people can actually physically be in the because I mean, because think about a hotel the, room. I mean, they're not that big, so right, and they're not really like air conditioned where they're blowing the air out the door. Um, so the air that's in there is correct. You know, it. it I am very very nervous about. Well, this. I I am going to be <laughs> your what as I was at City Arts. I will be there for you, and I will make sure that we, you know, police that we only have. You know, two, three people at a time. Yeah, and people. you know if you and no one closer than six feet. Right. <laughs> and if you start to feel overwhelmed, you just kind of say, 
look at me or I can tell them I'd be like, okay, we got to take 10, 15, 20. Um, see you later. <laughs> Go visit some other people. But no, we know that hopefully. Or you can just watch and let me step outside for exactly, fresh air or something. I'm, I have no yeah. doubt that once people see your magnificent works, that they will be buying them. So you do have. Well, my my fairies, only one of my fairies will be there. It's my not my newest because I've got two new ones that nobody has Ooh. seen. Nobody. I, sh- I was I'm so impressed with them that I showed them to somebody and they're trying to find some a gallery in New York. Oh, my it. God, Libby, what an honor that would be. Yeah, they're really special. The last two. I, I love the last one that I'm bringing with me also, but it has been seen once before. So it's it's it, that's going to be my little my night, my beautiful fairy on the wall. But other than that, they're they're older works in that way. I can offer them at a lower price for Christmas. Mm-hmm. And um, I need to make room. I've got a whole new series, completely, actually three whole new series. <laughs> They're totally brand new that I need to make room for. So um, I will have prices and they'll all be marked Ooh. out. So there's, those are the original prices and I'm going to put a slash through it. And essentially, um, don't, please don't be ridiculous um, because I am trying to to, to start you know <laughs> trying to start a um, a new a new business here let's talk about that get, so what type of up. business like i like i don't you know know what type of mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah okay so one thing that i've been requested for over and over, and i did to do a whole show on it is what i see and it's going to be called um I've got two different titles I'm working on. It's either Welcome to My World or Through My Eyes. I think I'm leaning toward Through My Eyes. I think I'm um, Through My Eyes. Yeah. So I'm thinking of Through My Eyes because um, there are things that I see that are, I will sit and be amazed, especially at night. I'm hoping I can capture it um, because if I can't capture it, it's going to be a waste of time. Um, but if I can paint what I see, it would be, I think it would be helpful for other people to understand because they'll go, they'll say stuff like, you're not blind. Well, yeah. Okay. So do people say that because (laughs) when they see your work, they find it hard to believe that someone who is visually impaired could have created the work? Yeah. I get that a lot. Plus I mow my own lawn. (laughs) Okay, now that should be interesting, Miss Libby. <laughs> I mean, because look, just so you know, I cut my own grass too, but I'm not visually impaired. So that that's... it's very stripey and takes me like twice the amount of time or more. <laughs> but I did it and I'm proud of myself. As you I just painted be. my house. And I know it's the last time I'll ever paint my house. I love painting houses. And it's the last time I'm ever going to paint my house. But Zach had to go behind me and like do a lot of touch-ups from what I've heard. <laughs> well, see, that's it's so nice that you have Mr. Zach, decent person. He's amazing. He is amazing. He's and amazing. It's too human bad being. he's so shy he's that he's not going to like hop on and say hi to everybody. Okay, but it's all good in the neighborhood. Oh no, he is, Zach has left the <laughs> room. <laughs> well, you're not mm-hmm. no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But you'll meet him at Favo if you come to exactly. Favo, and he is kind. The he is the kindest human I have ever met. He just has this very gentle nature about him that is like my opposite, which I'm like very Tigger like. <laughs> I I bounce a lot. <laughs> well, you know, you're an artist, and um, he's an artist too. But you're just different personality type so that's probably why you compliment yeah. each other i'm a go 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 i'm a go 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 can't stop and he's the opposite he's he he plays pretty much all day every day and when he's not working um his job he is playing his guitar every day and but it's not it's it's all laid back everything he does is laid back wow 
He is such a good person. I love him to death. I loved him since the moment I met him. We locked eyes and I fell in love with him. So where did you meet him, if I may ask? Um, at a store he was working in. And we'll just have to stop No problem. That sounds very good. That sounds good. Okay, so now I'm going to ask you, I know you have a website. Do you not? I do. Um, you're so good at this. Um, <laughs> well, you know, I have to. I have. To, You've done it more than And more. I have, but you know, I want to to make sure that I give you an opportunity for people to learn about you and for people to, to have access to where they can find out information about and you. I, have, I appreciate it because I am so flitty. I'd have just completely forgotten <laughs> to say it. Um, my website is um, www.libbysmithstudio.com and under Instagram, which I post all my small pieces that don't go on my website, um, like my pen and inks and stuff like that, um, they're um, Elsmith Studio. I'm at Elsmith Studio on Instagram and YouTube, I believe, and um, and Facebook. I'm all over the place. <laughs> if you find me once, I, you can usually find the links to everywhere exactly. else. Exactly. <laughs> I find that to be true. So. <laughs> Would you say then that the best way for people to reach out to you would be through your website? Um, You can reach out to me from my website. You can reach out to me um, by messaging through Instagram or Facebook. They both come right to me. And I'm always next to my okay. phone. <laughs> so I get, them, I get my messages pretty quick. Email is the one thing that is much harder because a lot of things go to spam. And so emails are much harder for me to get. So I usually recommend just finding me on Instagram or Facebook and send a message. So is there anything you would like to share that maybe even I don't know about you? Um, or that I don't have to know it about you. Is there anything else you'd like to share? <laughs> and I apologize because at one point my home phone was ringing and that was my mother. <laughs> So I was trying, I was like, oh my God, because I had texted people and told them I was going to be doing um, a podcast episode. And as the home phone was ringing, then there was a pause and you might have heard, you're going to hear on the recording where she called me on the cell phone, which is what I'm doing the podcast on. And I was trying to text her, but this is just <laughs> the way it is. You just got to go with the flow. Yeah, and that's it. what I do. Go with the flow. I'm loving it. I love it, baby. I love it. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, and just FYI, hopefully. Uh, Earth for All Spaces. Earth for All Spaces is the one who's actually, he, Brad has been right behind me and he is helping me in by I, offering this room for the, for the month. And um, I, he's, I am allowed to, if for any reason, and, and there's, if there's, oh, if there's, if you look on my website and you're planning to come to Favo and, or you look at my website and you see something you want to see in person and you're serious about it, contact me and we will try to set up a date where we can show it at okay. Favo. So during the month, um, I, or I can bring it Friday and which would, I would be much I would much rather not bother Brad but I can bring it Friday and um with me and I may not be showing that one but I can bring it so you can see it in person if you're very like interested in a particular and that's piece. why we're doing this episode on a Tuesday and I'm going to send you the link <laughs> and it's going to be available for people to view you know, through Anchor, but I'm going to send you the link so you can share it on your Facebook page on, I'm not certain how you and do I'm it on willing. Instagram, but I know you can share the link on your Facebook page. Yeah, you just, you have to post it up at the top of, of, of your main page. You have to post it right at the top. It's the only way you can hit a link. All right. Well, you'll, you'll so, do that and I'll try to figure it out because I don't think I've quite figured it out, but 
you know, we, we learn something <laughs> new every day. And that's part of the fun of what we do is that we learn something yeah. new every day. So I'm just trying to think. And for all my friends who have not heard your and who may be listening to this because we posted a link, but haven't heard your other podcasts. I started listening the, to them today, actually, because I couldn't get a hold of them earlier. But um, I started listening to them today and I binged them all day. They were so good. I was really Thank impressed with you. Thank you, sweetie. Podcast. You know I so love you too. And hopefully it, this will not be the last time you and I have a conversation, okay? I'd love that. I would love that. Um, you can keep up with how I'm doing because hopefully I start clay next wow. week is what I'm hoping for. I've got everything set up, sort of, sort of. Um, I There's still some things that were are uh, blocking me, but um, I can start working, I think, and clay. <gasps> I broke my thumb. <laughs> when did you break your thumb? <laughs> Um, a few weeks ago, oh, we need for the thumb to <laughs> so heal because now starting... I took a pottery class at Seminole State because you know, growing up, you know, I didn't do art or anything yeah. like that. I never did pottery, so I became, you know, I'm a senior citizen. And you know, if you are over the age of sixty, FYI, you can take classes <laughs> for free at local colleges. Okay, so I went to Seminole State. Ooh. And took pottery and had a blast. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna start throwing. I have cool. a wheel, and I was gonna start throwing some. I threw one piece, and right afterwards, wow. I broke my thumb. <laughs> so I haven't been able to do anything with clay because clay takes a lot. Yeah, of it thumb does, work. and that's why I'm saying that thumb <laughs> needs to heal. And the hardest part for me yeah, was actually centering the clay. Oh my goodness. But but you know it's <laughs> now that I got real easy. My my see what's um my problem is if I open my eyes, I have to do it with my eyes shut because I can't see and I strain to use my eyes. I'll end up putting my face down in it and I'm and I'm off centered and I'm a mess. But when I just relax, sit up straight, and close my eyes and feel the clay, that's when it comes together. Come and that's perfect. my point. And that's Perfect. what, you know, for a lot of people, and that's one of the things about clay and other things that are more tactile, that's the beauty mm -hmm. of it. And I mean, the things that you can create that you will create. I mean, I remember, you know, because I have a, I also have an Instagram called Elsmith Sculptures, I think. Um, it's a new one and it's going to be just for my sculptures and, um, I have a couple of my, I, I know I have at least one. I have um, a bust I just did, you know, a year ago. I was going to say recently, but it's been about a year. And then my life went upside down for a while. Um, and that was a lot of fun. And I really love doing large, like a full bust, um, life-size buffs. And I would love to do large pieces. Wow. Like really large you are pieces really because my hands my know sweetie, that. But hey. you know that's what I love well, about you is that you don't well, let smaller smaller you when your hands know a shape. Like my hands know what a hand feels like, but my hand doesn't know what a hand feels like when it's only like an inch wow. big. <laughs> so I want to do life size, you know, pieces, and that way I know I can create that. I know even without vision, I know what it feels like. I've been studying the world for so long and my daughter always laughed at me. She goes, why are you staring so hard? And I'm like, I'm memorizing the world and I can't see it. So I have to, I, I don't realize I'm staring. And, um, I've been all my paintings and drawings. Everybody tells me to loosen up is what I think I'm doing is memorizing the world because I know it's going to be gone and I don't want to forget it. I want to keep working. You want to keep the memories. I love, I love doing people because everybody's so unique and I never want people to look the same. I want them to all the, your uniqueness and their beauty of who they actually are. I, I just, I, that's what I want to do for the rest of my wow. life 
is show people's uniqueness. And as someone who has seen your work, especially the exhibit Magical Beings, I can attest to the fact that they were all unique. They really were. And I would please, and it doesn't matter because, you know, people who listen to my podcast, they listen in different parts of the world. The beauty of the internet and the world in which we live it makes it so yes. much smaller so you can actually yeah, you can go on you know. the internet you can see her work you can purchase her work i mean it's like there really mm-hmm. aren't boundaries per se you know we're not limited you know by by the the country the city the state whatever part of the world you live in because the internet has open the world up to us. And I take commissions. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be taking commissions. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous to take mm-hmm. commissions now. Um, but what I would do is if I'm not happy with it, I would just return. Wow. The so people, do you hear yeah. that? <laughs> if you have something in mind that you would like for Libby to do for you, please reach out to her at her website. Quickly, Mox now. Quickly, time is running short. But what? And then, and then we just move on to 3D, you know. And I have like all sorts of plans. I have lots and lots of ideas for 3D next. But um, uh, I I really would like to try to get that while I still have some color, because I still have color. It's a mess. It's a jumbled mess. But while I sell color, I really would like to get that one series done so people can see wow. what my world looks like. Wow. So, and then, hey, we'll just have fun with clay and hopefully everybody will like it because I won't know what it looks like. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> but you'll, have the the, you'll have the memory of what it felt like if you created I- it. I touch everything. You'll see me as I touch. As I, do, I touch everything, and I think it's just so. I can get used to this. So, wow. um, I brailed my dad before he passed away. Um, when he first got diagnosed with cancer, I'm like, um, Dad, I want to sculpt you, but can I braille you? Can I like touch your face? And you know, and I did a sculpture of him. And the, I've had it, he passed away three years ago and I've had it for 10 years. I did it like Mm -hmm. 10 years ago and the blind lady hit the table. It was sitting on and knocked it off. I know. I, I'm just, I'm so broken myself over it. I cried so long. So we are looking for sturdier places to put our yeah. work. <laughs> and it was all clay because I know in Sanford, there's a place yeah. that can bronze stuff clay. for you. There's a hmm? place in Sanford that's a bronze foundry. Okay. Cause I went to a bronze foundry in St. Mm-hmm. Augustine and that bronze you saw yes. of my daughter my cost with me doing the digging and the pouring and the making the molds and everything myself, Mm -hmm. but having them behind my back and making sure everything is done right and helping me Mm -hmm. along with it. But me doing all the hard labor, (laughs) it cost me like $2,500. My cost. I will find out the name of the place. Like 15 wow. years ago Sanford, or 20 years ago. I don't think they're that expensive, but I will try to get you the information so you can do some investigation because I'm aware of it. It's in it's in Sanford. It's straight down Lake Mary Boulevard. Yeah, my biggest my biggest problem with going larger is because you have to right. fire it. And I'm like, I don't have a kiln that big to do to fire large pieces. And that has been a big thing for me all along. And if I could pull mold and and have them bronze or something, I would gladly do that, but I don't know if I can hmm. afford it. Okay, because now the so, pottery studio, do they have a large kiln? I have no well, idea. Know, you know people there, so I you don't need know. to reach out to your people and ask them. Um, both my people have <gasps> left there. I didn't know, but also in Sanford, um, 
where you can buy clay. Is that where you buy your clay from in Sanford? I they do. have a kiln there. You I, can I, ask I, them. I know. I heard that. I heard they had a kiln there, and it was large, quite so you large. Didn't know that I was the so, source of all this information, did you? <laughs> you right. <laughs> I'm just glad that I know what I know because that's where I went and got the clay for my class at Seminole State. Okay. Yes, awesome. and that's something that I too would like to continue to do along with the 15 other things I'm continuing to do. So I'm like you, I, I go off on tangents. I start doing this. I start doing that. But you know, other things exactly. that we never exactly. stop. Exactly. Never stop. But that's the beauty <laughs> of, of life, the life that we live in. I get to meet so many people. That's how I met you. That's how I met Brad. Yeah. And, and it just like fills my life with joy and excitement. Yeah. Yes. You know those um all the little pan pinnings mm -hmm. you saw um that you do recently. I think what I'm gonna do for the show for Favo also for those of you who just wanna pick up something small, I'm thinking about putting them see if I can get them done in time, um is to get cards made and have blank greeting that cards would be cool. that can be put purchased as a set. That would be magnificent. Like, because a lot yes, of them because, are mm -hmm. birds or mm -hmm. wild animals or, you know, cool. whatever. And if they're not a set, we can make you a set out of the ones that are Excellent. there. And so that is, I do have cards. I will have cards and a few prints, not a lot of prints, but a few prints with me. But, um, Hopefully I can get these cards because I think they will just be beautiful. Just a beautiful Christmas present. Well, you know, I have so. found that, you know, for all of my friends who are artists and, and people do appreciate handmade gifts, gifts that, you know, artists have created, whether it be a painting, a card, whatever it is. I think people appreciate the fact that someone took the time to, to purchase something for them that someone else had made as opposed to, you know, because it's unique as opposed to you go to the mall or something and, and there may be 10 or 15 of the same item. There's something about a gift that has been hand made by someone that, that really shows love. You know what I'm saying? And that you care for the person. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I always say, um, don't, don't buy art if you don't love it, like love it because my art, I want to go where it will truly be loved because everything I've done, I've put a piece of my soul. I in. totally agree with you. A part of your spirit. So I am, the, I am the worst salesman in the world. I'm really horrible at it. I do not sell my art. Well, I'm going to be your wing well. person. So, you know, I have the gift of gab, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I do, but I do encourage if you see something, mine or somebody else's art there, and you either love it or you know somebody who you know will love it, you should get it because that is something that you may never see I again with you you know so and there's a lot of amazing artists at Favo indeed but we so want them to I'm come honored to and be see in that you group and buy from you hello okay and then after they buy from well you, I would like that they can too. go visit somebody <laughs> sure, else much like that. I would appreciate <laughs> it but but just saying there are also a lot of room really it's a it's an amazing place you should go and see all of the all of the places but yes please come back exactly <laughs> so hopefully for those that are in the Orlando area we hope to see you and so do you wish to say anything in closing Libby um I am so bad at this. Um, no, I can't think of anything except for I really do hope to see you guys out there. Um, please respect the six the six feet rule because normally I'm a huge hugger and I will want to be running over there to give everybody hugs. So um, uh, I really do hope to see people out because it'll be my first time out in a long time. And I love you and I appreciate you, Pam, love, for letting I me be on your show. Too, and we will do this again and maybe... 
Zach will actually say hello. Who knows, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing Fawn is off exactly, this year. <laughs> exactly. So I want to thank you again, Libby, and I want to thank those of you that have listened to my podcast. And believe it or not, next week, December the 8th, will be the one-year anniversary of when I first started my podcast, Ancestral Muses. Oh so I am going to do an episode in which I'm going to tell a story. So stay tuned and look for that. I'm not certain when I'll do it, but I'll do it between now and December the 8th, which is one day next week. So again, thank you. Good night. And I will see you Friday. Good night. Thank you, everyone who listens. Have a good night. Bye.